want to help you out. I want to help you filter through a lot of the nonsensical stuff that's out there surrounding the keto diet right now. I've said it many times before, as the keto diet starts to gain more and more momentum and popularity, we're gonna be crowded with tons of misinformation that's out there. And I'm not saying that everything that I say is the gospel truth, but I am going to lay some science out for you to help you know what the top five keto myths are right now. So by the end of this video, you're gonna have a clear understanding of what you can do to start easing your mind when it comes down to the ketogenic diet. So let's go ahead and let's dive in. But first, you're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, but also peppered in throughout the week as well. Also make sure you hit that little bell button that's gonna allow you to turn on notifications so that you know whenever I go live or whenever I post a new video. So let's go ahead and drop right in. Myth number one, you need carbs to live, but also too much protein is gonna kick you out of keto. They fall into the same, right? Okay, so here's what we have to remember. Our bodies do need carbs to live, but they create their own. We don't need to be eating carbs in order to live. You see, even when we look back way in history, it's not like our bodies were able to just predetermine that we are automatically gonna consume carbs with every single meal. I mean, heck, sometimes we probably consumed carbs, sometimes we didn't, sometimes we probably went weeks or at least days without carbs. The fact is our body has systems in place to create carbohydrates for energy. It's called gluconeogenesis. It literally means making glucose from new substrates. So our body creates glucose, carbohydrates, from protein or from existing tissues, or it even creates it from byproducts of exercise like lactate. So when someone tells you that you're doing the keto diet and it's unhealthy because your body needs carbs, you can tell them that your body already knows how to create carbs. So I have to tack onto this by saying that gluconeogenesis or the creation of carbohydrates from protein isn't going to kick you out of keto. You'd have to go way overboard. Now, I have to fall on the sword here a little bit. A couple of years ago, I used to believe that too much protein would kick you out of keto. But the fact is, when we start looking at the science, and now there's a lot more science surrounding the keto world, we find that gluconeogenesis is a perfectly healthy process that doesn't necessarily kick you out of keto. So what I mean by that is, when you consume protein, it's not converting to sugar that's knocking you out of ketosis. It's converting into sugar that your body needs for specific demands. You see, gluconeogenesis is what is called demand-driven. It's a really cool thing. You have specific cells in your body, like red blood cells, like kidney cells, like specific portions of your brain, or even your testes, that actually require glucose. Like, they can't run on anything else. So, of course, the body's going to demand some glucose. So if you're not eating carbohydrates, this demand-driven process is going to trigger the creation of glucose from something else in order to feed the testes, to feed the kidneys, to feed the red blood cells, and to feed portions of the brain. It's a perfectly natural and perfectly healthy process. And there's a study that proves that gluconeogenesis does occur a bit more when we're on a low-carb diet. This study was published in the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. Okay, it took a look at three different groups of test subjects. One group went on 11 days of a high carb diet, another group did 11 days of a moderate carb, and another group did 11 days of a very low carb ketogenic diet, like 2% carb. And what they found is at the end of this 11 days, blood glucose levels had dropped and stabilized with the low carb group, but gluconeogenesis had increased 14%. So we had a decrease in blood glucose, which is exactly what we want, while simultaneously having an increase in gluconeogenesis. So what that tells us is that gluconeogenesis increase doesn't correlate with just an increase in blood sugar. It increases to meet demand. So our blood sugar actually went down, but we created more sugar from protein sources. So it's not like it's gonna kick you out of keto or make you waste muscle. It's simply demand driven to feed our brain, which 30% of our brain needs glucose, and to feed our other cells. Myth number two, calories don't matter on a keto diet. All right, so this is where we can get all the internet trolls together that fight about calories in versus calories out or the opposite, right? The fact is, calories do matter, but at what time do they matter? Do they matter over the course of a day or do they matter right in the moment? See, the fact is, thermodynamics apply. You cannot take in more energy than you burn and expect to lose weight and vice versa. You can't take in less energy than you burn and expect to gain weight. 
Okay, we have to keep it in balance. The problem is we don't always know where that balance lies. Do we measure it over the course of a minute, a day, an hour, whatever? You see, it's all varying depending on what our thermic dynamic load is at that point in time, but also just overall how much energy we're expending at that point in time. The other thing that we have to look at is the second law of thermodynamics, and that says that any chemical reaction within our body takes some energy. So calories in versus calories out doesn't necessarily take that into the equation. Whereas like fats and carbohydrates don't take a whole lot of energy to metabolize, proteins take like 20 to 30% of the overall caloric count of the protein just to metabolize it. There's a strong thermic effect of protein. So calories in versus calories out don't take into equation that not all calories are created equal. So it's like a two part equation. It's like, yes, calories in versus calories out matter, but a calorie is not equal to another calorie. So we have to apply both things. The reason I say this though is because a lot of people think that on a ketogenic diet, you're completely immune to calories. Like you can just eat whatever you want and because you don't have glucose and insulin spike, you can just go to town. That is complete misinformation. That's not how it works. But I will argue you have a little bit more metabolic flexibility because you don't have the big rises and falls in insulin. Myth number three, you're going to end up getting diabetic ketoacidosis. All right, this one's just silly nowadays because ketoacidosis and ketosis are two very, very different things. Diabetic ketoacidosis is where you have so much in the way of ketones that are being produced that your blood becomes thick and acidic and ends up making you sick and can kill you. Okay, that sounds scary, enough to really get a lot of people freaked out and afraid to do the keto diet. But the fact is, is that that only occurs in those that don't produce insulin, like type one diabetics, okay? So very important to know this, insulin still can be released to regulate ketones. Basically, those ketones would be produced by the liver, flow through the bloodstream, but in a diabetic person, they're not gonna have insulin that ever allows the ketones to do their job. So they just compound and pile up and eventually make the blood viscous and acidic. A healthy, normal individual that is not a type one diabetic will produce enough insulin to make sure that the ketones get either excreted or utilized by the cell. So do not freak out you're not gonna end up with ketoacidosis. Myth number four, you're going to lose all your hard-earned muscle and you're gonna waste away and end up being skinny fat. This is a common one and no, it's not true, okay? Leucine oxidation means muscle breaking down. Just to put this out there, right? When we start breaking down muscle, leucine, which is a primary amino acid, becomes oxidized and it breaks down. That means we're losing muscle. Beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is the main ketone body when you're on a ketogenic diet, blocks leucine oxidation. So it protects the leucine from oxidizing, and it actually increases the overall uptake of leucine into the skeletal muscle by five to 17%. Okay, but here's what's crazy. So ketones block leucine breakdown by up to 41%. It's extremely anti-catabolic. It's extremely muscle sparing. So if you're trying to lose the most amount of weight, you need to keep your lean body mass because your lean body mass is what's going to allow you to maintain a high level of metabolism. It also means that you wanna be consuming enough protein and getting it in the right form. Okay, that's where, of course, my friends at ButcherBox come in. And if you're a follower of this channel, you know what a tremendous, huge sponsor they are of this channel. So ButcherBox is a way that you can get grass-fed, grass-finished, high-quality beef and organic pasture-raised chicken for literally, I mean literally cheaper than the grocery store, delivered right to your door. I'm not here to just tout anything. Honestly, if it wasn't a good bargain and a good deal, I wouldn't be having them on my channel. It's something that I use and it's something that I recommend. So anyway, when it comes down to the keto diet, you have to be consuming the right kinds of fats and the right kinds of proteins, and that's why ButcherBox plays a huge role. So when you combine the fact that the ketogenic diet's gonna block leucine oxidation, and couple that with the fact that that excess protein is not gonna kick you out of keto, it makes perfect sense. Eat high quality fats and eat high quality proteins on a ketogenic diet and you're not gonna have any issue with breaking down muscle. I like to think that I'm a fairly heavily muscled person and I haven't lost muscle on the ketogenic diet. So I don't know, maybe I'm my own case study. It leads me in to myth number five. Ketosis causes inflammation. Okay. This one is coming from people that don't know a lick about inflammation. Okay, first of all, inflammation is a natural process that we need to have occur, 
We just don't want it at a chronic level. But additionally, the reason that people have an issue with inflammation when they're on the ketogenic diet is simply because they're eating a ton of omega-6 fats, right? They're eating really low quality meats. They're eating really low quality cheeses that have a high level of ultimately dairy and fat coming from grain-fed animals, so very high omega-6, which triggers inflammation in and of itself. They're also eating a ton of processed stuff. They're eating low quality like burger patties that are frozen, all these things that trigger inflammation. Beta-hydroxybutyrate, again, that ketone body in and of itself blocks nuclear factor kappa B. That's like the epicenter for inflammation. So ketosis blocks inflammation. So if you're doing the ketogenic diet right and you're eating good clean food and ultimately good clean meat like from ButcherBox, et cetera, you're gonna end up feeling a lot better and not have those high levels of inflammation. Whereas if you went to the grocery store and you just grabbed a bunch of these gnarly keto snacks that are coming out and a bunch of cheese crisps all the time, that will trigger inflammation. Do keto right and you'll reduce inflammation. So there you have it, super simple, the five keto myths. And I want you to share this with your family and friends and anyone that is questioning the ketogenic lifestyle. Ultimately, we need to band together and make sure that the right information gets out there, but also make sure that everyone is taking the right steps towards optimizing their own life so the world can just be a better place. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and a big thank you again to ButcherBox. Their link is down in the description. Make sure you check them out.